good morning, uh, Navya and Aman. Uh, thank you for being on time. Uh, today we are going to revise uh, Lost Spring. It's a very important lesson for the exam uh, from the exam point of view as uh, this lesson is about the uh, child labor. Okay, so therefore this lesson is very very important for us to learn. So today we are going to revise this lesson, uh, Lost Spring. Okay, it is about the child labor, how the poor innocent people uh, due to lack of uh, government support, due to lack of uh, you know, parental support due to uh, stark poverty, uh, they are not able to uh, have access to education. As a result, their uh, their life is limited to the slums, and they are not able to uh, have access to proper education. So, what happens when you know they are not having education? When they are deprived of having education, how are their uh, you know childhood days being wasted? Okay. Uh, are something that are some issues that we are going to learn today in uh, today's lesson. Okay, so welcome Nabiya, Aman, Vedant, and Sakshi. Uh, now we are going to um, start uh, the lesson, revision of the lesson, Lost Spring. So hopefully, you shall be, uh, you shall stay focused so that you are able to understand. Okay, so uh, I am going to begin the lesson. So, dear students, as you can see, uh, I'll just read out the theme of the story first, and, uh, and there is a concept video, of course. You can, as you can see uh, on your screen, uh, you can see on your screen, uh, video explanation is also there. This is concept video. So, uh, I have already made the playlist for you all, uh, all dear students. I have made the playlist for your respective classes. So uh, go to the playlist and go to class 12 folder. You should be able to explore all the lessons of your class. You don't have to, uh, you know, uh, go for frantic search on the home page of my channel. Now straight away all the teachers have made the playlists. So go directly to the playlist, go to your class and inside your class folder you should be able to find all the um, concept or live videos, okay. Uh, so let's begin today's lesson, Lost Spring by Ennis Jung. Um, the story deals with the untold tale of slum children who live a life of depression and poverty for generations together. Okay? So for generations together, uh, these children uh, live a life of depression and poverty. Okay? Their forefathers are either immigrants from uh, Bangladesh or migrant workers from different parts of the country. So we are talking about slum children in this lesson, dear students. So either these children, uh, you know, either the forefathers of these children were uh, immigrants from Bangladesh or uh, some other parts of the country. This story is divided into two parts. The first part describes the deplorable state of Sahil and his family who have migrated from Bangladesh during 1971. So, uh, dear students, uh, Bangladesh's uh, liberation war took place in 1971. Uh, India sent her troops and helped Bangladesh uh, become free from from the um, you know Pakistan because uh, Bangladesh was the uh, was under uh, the modern Pakistan at that time. Okay, it was called East Pakistan and West Pakistan. East Pakistan uh, is uh, East Pakistan was. Uh, the modern Bangladesh and West Pakistan uh, was modern Pakistan. Okay, so in the liberation war of Bangladesh, which took place in 1971, after this liberation uh, of war, a liberation war, uh, Sahib's family, or might be during before the liberation, they uh, settled to Delhi, they migrated to Delhi, okay, and uh, started living in the slum areas. So the first part of the story is divided uh, into, uh, divided about, uh, divide, uh, sorry, the uh, story is divided into two parts. The first part of the story uh, talks about a family uh, of uh, Sahib, okay, Sahib who have migrated from Bangladesh during 1971 war. The second part of the story describes about Mukesh whose family tradition of Bengal making continues for generations together in spite of health hazards of working in dingy cells. And the second part of the story will find about another boy who is Mukesh. 
where uh, Mukesh, uh, whose family is engaged in making bangles, okay, making bangles for generations together, okay, in spite of health hazards of working in dingy cells, okay, where bangles are manufactured. So, bangles are manufactured in dingy cells in a factory which is not adequately lighted and in a very cramped, uh, you know, environment. Even though it's a health hazard, but Mukesh's family uh, has been involved into uh, bangle making for generations together, uh, avoiding all kinds of health hazards. Mukesh belongs to a family which is engaged in bangle making, uh, which is engaged in bang, uh, bangle making. Uh, as you can see here, uh, like many other families, Firozabad is the hub of India's glass blowing industry where generation after generation has been involved in this business. So Mukesh's family belongs to Firozabad, okay, which is the hub of India's glass making industry where generation after generation people uh, are involved in this kind of business. Okay, so uh, dear students, this is the introduction and we know that this story deals with the uh, suffering and misery of the slum children okay, uh, for generations together because they are not in a position to improve their financial status. As a result, they are deprived of basic uh, things of life as well as education. Okay. So first uh, part uh, is, uh, uh, is, is about uh, a boy called Sahib and second part is about a boy called Mukesh. Okay. Okay, now let's move. Uh, first part we'll discuss afterwards. Let me first discuss about the uh, what is the poem or uh, story all about. In this lesson, lost spring, spring has been used in the context of childhood. Okay, spring has been used in the context of childhood. Okay, uh, like childhood phase is the most formative phase of uh, one's life, and uh, spring season is also something which is uh, very much rejuvenating and which gives birth to, uh, which uh, gives birth, birth to many, uh, I mean, uh, many things in nature. So, and the nature looks absolutely uh, refreshing and rejuvenating during the spring season. Therefore, the uh, spring season has been compared to the childhood phase of, of our life. Spring is considered the most cherished season of the year when flowers bloom. Similarly, childhood is the most formative years of life. The story describes the pathetic life of the innocent people losing their childhood in the vicious circle of poverty and illiteracy. Okay? As I told you, the story is about the pathetic and miserable life of the innocent children belonging to slum areas and the story describes how they lose their formative years of childhood in the vicious circle of poverty and illiteracy okay? because they cannot come out of this, 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 this social evil that is poverty here. Uh, Sahin and Mukesh are metaphors for all slum children who fall prey to the family tradition of rag picking. Sahib's family is involved in the business of rag picking and Mukesh's family is involved in uh, business, uh, bangle making pro profession, okay, bangle making profession. With Mukesh being the exception as he wants to be a motor mechanic, breaking the family tradition of bangle ma making. In the second part of the story, we find about a boy, as I told you, Mukesh, who wants to be a motor mechanic in spite of having challenges in life, in spite of having the limitations, uh, you know, because nobody in his family has ever dared to become someone else except being involved in the bangle making industry with the exception of uh, Mukesh because he wants to break away the tradition, come away from the tradition and embrace the profession of uh, motor mechanic. Okay, so uh, let's find out whether he, uh, what happens with Mukesh, whether he is able to uh, succeed uh, in his ambition. So that will come later. The Author's acquaintance with Sahib and other barefoot rag pickers introduced her to Simapuri. Okay. So Simapuri, dear students, like uh, Firozabad is the place where Mukesh and his family are located. So, similarly, uh, Simapuri is the place where uh, Sahib and his family are, uh, are located uh, and uh, you know, they have their uh, rag picking business. Okay, Simapuri. So two places we come to know in this lesson. One is Simapuri, where Sahib and his family are located, 
and another uh, place that is uh, Firozabad where Mukesh and his family are involved in uh, glass making industry, okay, bangle making industry. Okay, Simapuri consists of people who left Bangladesh in the 1971 war. So, Simapuri mostly consists of the Bangladeshi immigrants, okay, who left Bangladesh in 1971 war. As I told you, 1971. Uh, you know, it's the year of Bangladesh's liberation from Pakistan. Earlier, Bangladesh was known as, uh, you know, East Pakistan, uh, and Pakistan was known as West Pakistan. So, Bangladesh, uh, present Bangladesh was under the dominion of uh, the uh, West Pakistan, that is the modern day Pakistan. So, Bangladesh uh, says uh, uh, liberation uh, was in 1971 there was a war of liberation uh, in bangladesh from the uh, you know from the pakistan rule so during the liberation of liberation war of bangladesh you know uh, sahib and his family uh, migrated and many more families from bangladesh uh, migrated to simapuri okay in the slum areas uh, in 1971 Sah uh, 71. Saheb's family is among them about about 10,000 rag pickers live here. Okay, about 10,000 rag pickers live in the place called Simapuri. When Anis, Anis means here uh, the writer, when Anis visits that place, she comes to know that these rag pickers have lived here for more than 30 years without any identity. So, uh, the writer, our writer is uh, a social worker also. Okay, she is uh, uh, involved in uh, NGO and she wanted to explore the social and economic uh, condition of uh, the slum children. Therefore, uh, her investigation, her research work uh, made her visit Simapuri and when she visited Simapuri, she came to know about some, some unknown details, okay, which uh, were hitherto unknown to everyone else. So now she will let us know something about her discovery of Simapuri and Firozabad in this lesson. When Anis visits that place, she comes to know that these rag pickers have lived here for more than 30 years without any identity. They were living without any identity because they were uh, looked upon as, uh, you know, uh, negligible populace, you can say. Okay, they did not have any ration card, they did not have any name in the... Uh, you, know, you know, they did not come under the jurisdiction of the government and government uh, you know, plans. They do not have permits but do have ration cards thanks to the selfish whims and wishes, uh, wishes of the politicians. So they do not have permits, they do not have, but do have of course ration cards but uh, go to uh, Prashant Varikar sir, Prashant Varikar. So, the family tradition of rag picking in the case of Sahib and bangal making in the case of Mukesh is a deterrent for both the boys to think big and do something out of the box. Okay. Uh, so, uh, dear students, you can uh, understand the miserable plight of these slum, children, uh, slum people. Uh, they do not have any identity of their own. They do not have permits, but they have ration cards, of course. Uh, thanks to the selfish whims and wishes of the politicians because they are the road banks for the politicians. So politicians uh, for their selfish ends, for uh, uh, you know getting those uh, votes that count, you know they have managed of course ration cards for them but uh, you know otherwise they don't have any identity of their own. With this they can get their name on voters list and buy grains. Okay, So what was the purpose behind uh, issuing ration cards to those uh, poor people, slum people? so that with the help of a ration card or identity card they are able to register their names on the voter list and uh, able to cast their votes okay that is the reason political reason as to why they were issued ration cards the family tradition of rag picking in the case of sahib and bengal making in the case of mukesh is deterrent for both the boys to think big and do something out of the box okay to do do something out of the box so uh, dear students uh, uh, do you understand the meaning of this? Okay, before that I just ask you uh, one question. Mm. Okay, Anish, uh, is the font uh, adequate enough for you to, um, you know, see? 
or I should uh, increase the font size. Uh, can you please text me quickly, Arnish? Uh, is the font adequate enough, or I need to increase the font size? Okay. So uh, the family tradition of rap picking in the case of Sahib and bangle making in the case of Mukesh is a deterrent for both the boys to think big and do something out of the box. Okay. Deterrent means something that comes as uh, interruption, something that does not allow you to do what you like. That is called deterrent, okay? Uh, speed breaker or you can say it's an interruption. So the family tradition for Sahib who lives in Simapuri, uh, okay, Aman, uh, it's a bit blur. Uh, so uh, uh, Aman, uh, uh, you know, the blurness, could be because of your uh, low resolution of the screen you can uh, make it uh, 360 at least to be able to see it properly okay because it's a resolution issue from your end from my end there is no such streaming issue uh, i just wanted to ask whether you are able to see the font properly if you are not able to see the font properly then i've got to minimize the full screen mode and Increase the font size. No, sir, the text is small. Okay. If the text is small, in that case, uh, I can help you out, of course. Um, I can certainly help you out, dear students. I'll just hang on for a while. I'm going to resolve this. Okay, uh, so hopefully uh, you are able to uh, see at the moment and in case you have difficulty in, uh, uh, in seeing in the portrait mode, what you can do is you can make it landscape mode and disable the chat option. Because if you do not disable the chat option, then in landscape mode, uh, your uh, chat option will overlap your content part of the screen. Therefore, uh, if you are not able to see in portrait mode, you can... Uh, you can see on landscape mode and disable the chat option. Okay. Thank you, Aman. Uh, thank you so much. So, um, uh, here, let's find out. Okay. So, dear students, family tradition of rack picking uh, is uh, for Sahib and bangle making for Mukesh. So, this, uh, these two family professions for generation together are the stumbling blocks or the deterrents for both Mukesh uh, both, both for Sahib and Mukesh respectively to think something big, to think something out of the box, understood? Uh, because uh, nobody uh, so far from their respective families uh, has dreamed to do anything else uh, besides joining their family professions. So therefore, uh, therefore uh, the family tradition is a deterrent for them. But uh, let's find out what happens. However, Mukesh in the second part of the story wants to be a motor mechanic, okay? And Mukesh in the second part, as I told you before, wants to be a uh, motor mechanic. He wants to be a motor mechanic. Okay, so... Um, Okay, so uh, Mukesh wants to be a motor mechanic, uh, as uh, I have already told you, uh, something which is a nightmare for his family members, something which is a nice family members. So uh, it's a nightmare because nobody uh, ever thought of doing something else, uh, you know, uh, than joining their respective family professions. Th that is uh, why it's a nightmare for his family members as they cannot afford to embrace any other profession besides bangle making. Therefore, Mukesh has been projected to be an iconoclast in the story. Dear students, you know the meaning of iconoclast? Iconoclast is a person who tends to break away from the conventional societal norms. Okay? Uh, a person uh, is called a person is called an iconoclast if he wants to break away from the conventional norms, conventional, uh, you know, mm, uh, rules, okay, conventional rules and regulations. So he is called an iconoclast. So here, why is Mukesh uh, 
projected to be an iconoclast in the story because Mukesh wanted to embrace the profession of motor mechanic, okay? Uh, mm, uh, that is why Mukesh has been projected to be an iconoclast in this lesson. Understood? Uh, so, because uh, his family can never uh, think of allowing him to do something else uh, than bangle making. But he dreams something out of the box. He wants to be, an, uh, to be a motor mechanic. Therefore, he has been projected to be an iconoclast in the story. Okay. Next you see, Sahib too lost his freedom when he was working at a tea stall. Okay. So Sahib, Sahib in the first part of the story, he was working in a tea stall. Okay. Besides rack picking, he was uh, also working in a tea stall. Okay. So while he was working in a tea stall, he lost his freedom because if you are working under somebody, you cannot do most part of the uh, day you are involved in that profession as a result you are not able to do what you feel like doing okay and uh, that is the reason why Sahib thought he lost his freedom when he was working at a tea stall and he was paid 800 rupees as well as his meal so in return to his service to the tea stall he was paid 800 rupees as well as his meals Sahib was not happy in spite of that Sahib was not happy. So why was Sahib not happy? Because Sahib was not happy as the steel canister, steel canister that he used to carry to serve tea to others seemed heavier than the plastic bag. Okay? It seemed heavier, it's metaphorical or figurative use of the term seemed heavier than the plastic bag. Why? Because, because of the reason that, because of the reason that you know, uh, plastic bag has some freedom, like when he goes for rack picking uh, by carrying a plastic bag on his shoulder, uh, he has some freedom of his own. He can do work whenever he feels like, but uh, still canister is something which he has to uh, carry in order to serve people uh, at a particular time. He cannot do it uh, whenever you know he feels like, because he is working uh, at a tea stall and he has to do it as per the convenience of the owner, okay, owner of the tea stall, he cannot do it as per his own convenience. Therefore, he, uh, therefore, the writer says that steel canister appears to be heavier than the plastic bag. Okay. Okay. Uh, he wanted to be his own master, okay, Sahib wanted to be his own master, see. For Sahib, the tagline that you can give dear students is, he wanted to be his own master. Like Mukesh wanted to be a motor mechanic, likewise, Sahib has an objective in mind, he wanted to be his own master. Therefore, the longing for living a normal childhood can be seen in both the boys, okay. Uh, these two boys are quite different even though they are metaphor for all the slum children in Simapuri as well as you know Mukesh in uh, uh, Firozabad in spite of being the metaphors for all these poor, ch uh, you know, poor children in these two areas but they are unique because Sahib wanted to uh, be his own master whereas Mukesh wanted to live a life okay quite different from the rest of the boys of his age Therefore, the longing for living a normal childhood can be seen in both the boys, okay? Living a normal childhood. What is the normal childhood, dear students? Normal childhood means the ability to do whatever you feel like, the ability to work towards uh, your hobbies, or ability to work towards, uh, you know, towards uh, your goal or objective, uh, the ability to be free whenever you feel like, but uh, they are not free in the real sense of the term because of the stark poverty they are somewhere or the other chained okay therefore uh, but still uh, still they have some longing for living a normal childhood okay because they want to do something different from the rest of the boys of their respective age groups the author feels that the slum people are caught in two distinct worlds okay they are caught in two distinct worlds what, it, what is that one is the family caught in the clutches of poverty 
and the stigma of caste and uh, stigma and caste. So one is the family caught in the clutches of poverty and the stigma of caste. This is the first, um, you know, impediment because uh, caste system uh, and poverty, you know, caste system and poverty, they are the two social evils. So they are uh, entangled in these uh, social evils. Um, and then secondly, the world of those rich people who exploit them for their selfish benefits. Okay. So this particular part in the narrative is important, dear students. How are how are the slum children or how are the slum people uh, caught in two different uh, distinct worlds? Okay, uh, this is a very important question even for board examination. Understood? So try to uh, uh, study in detail uh, this particular part in your text where the the writer has given detailed description. Uh, I have also tried to uh, you know highlight these points here. Uh, so after that, I shall go ahead with the study at a glance. In that case, you will also find the mention of this, the reference of this. Anyway, um, so what are the two distinct worlds? First is uh, family caught in the clutches of poverty and the stigma of caste. Okay, mm, on the one hand poverty, and on the another hand, uh, on another hand stigma of caste. And secondly, they are exploited by the rich people for their selfish benefits. These people are caught in the vicious circle of shahukars, middlemen, policemen, bureaucrats and politicians. They have also fallen prey or they have also become victims of uh, shahukars, middlemen, policemen, bureaucrats and politicians. Okay, Because they exploit them okay, to gain um, their, uh, to have advantage over them for their selfish benefits, they, uh, they exploit them, they make the uh, uh, bad use of those children, Okay, exploitation. Okay. It is because of these people that the child is weighed down with responsibility at such a tender age. It is because of these people, bureaucrats, middlemen, southers, policemen, politicians, because of their interference in their life, because of their uh, exploitation by these people, uh, they have heavy responsibilities okay, at such a tender age, such a small age, they have heavy responsibilities. Okay, responsibilities in the form of earning money for their family okay, and uh, helping their parents out even at a small age because their parents are not financially independent, therefore they cannot support them. Okay? Uh, so dear students, uh, I have given you some uh, textual question answers also here, you can see NCRT question answers, so you will go through these. But before that, uh, let me um, uh, let me tell you one thing. Uh, the, um, this NCRT solutions are really very really important, dear students. Uh, for from exam point of view, like for example, uh, you can see here. Uh, here it is very important. You see, uh, what is Sahib looking for in the garbage dumps? Where is he and where has he come from? So Sahib is looking for coins. Okay, uh, they are rag pickers. They do rag picking on a day in and day out basis. So, what is Sahib looking for in the garbage? Sahib is looking for coins, which is considered as gold in the story. Why is, uh, coins have been compared to gold in the story? Because, because for a poor, uh, for a poor child, for a poor child like Sahib, uh, getting a uh, five rupee coin or one rupee coin is something uh, equivalent to gold. Okay? Because normally they do not. Uh, find coins in the garbage. Okay, so whenever whatever little uh, what, uh, whatever coins of little denomination they get, you know that is like gold for them, very important for them. Okay, so uh, Sahib is looking for coins which is considered as gold in the story in garbage dumps. Garbage dumps he is able to find out sometimes very rarely of course coins. That is why coins have been compared to gold. Okay, uh, in the story why because a, a, a small coin of uh, even two rupee denomination is very very important for the survival of people therefore it is uh, considered to be gold he is presently living at Simapuri, which is at the periphery of delhi periphery means outskirt of delhi he has come from bangladesh in 1971 okay next question you see what explanation does the author offer for the children not wearing footwear okay so if you go to the text uh, You'll find out uh, the uh, the reference of uh, the children, uh, you know, who are not wearing footwear. Why? What is the reason? What kind of explanation does the author give to us? Let us find out. The narrator found that children across the country walk barefoot in cities and on village roads. It is not lack of money always, but a tradition to stay fair, barefoot. But the narrator wonders about the fact that children are walking barefoot to explain away their 
a, a perpetual state of poverty okay so there are there are two reasons okay number one reason is the children have a tradition of uh, uh, staying barefoot and not wearing chappals uh, and secondly they are not able to afford to the cost of chappal uh, or any footwear therefore they prefer to stay bare feet understood so there are two reasons number one uh, they are not uh, used to wearing uh, any footwear okay they have a tradition of remaining uh, bare foot and secondly they are not able to afford to the cost of the uh, footwear therefore they prefer to stay bare foot okay now next question is is sahib happy working at the tea stall i already explained you no he is not happy working at the tea stall as he was no longer his own master by working at the tea stall at a meager salary of 800 with meals a meager means very small salary of 800 rupees with meals okay is something uh, which is not at all sufficient for sahib uh, and moreover he is not his own master there uh, working at the tea stall the steel canister which he was carrying in his hand seemed heavier than the plastic bag he was carrying over his shoulder therefore he left the tea stall so sahib left the tea stall because he wanted to be the master of his own okay he wanted to be his own master um, and moreover the uh, the the salary that he gets at the end of the month uh, salary of rupees 800 at the end of the month is a very meager amount for him to survive uh, these are the two reasons as to why he wanted to leave the uh, tea stall and eventually he uh, lived, uh, left his tea stall uh, because his plastic bag was, because his uh, steel canister was heavier than his plastic bag. Why? Because uh, plastic bag he can, uh, he can, he can carry um, any time. He has, uh, he has his own freedom of working at his own pace, whereas in the tea stall he doesn't have freedom of his work in his own uh, style he has to he has to follow certain norms okay because the tea stall belongs to somebody else therefore the writer metaphorically mentioned that the steel canister appeared to be uh, heavier than the plastic bag okay therefore it left his tea stall okay dear, dear students this is a very important question for board exam as well what makes the city of Firozabad famous what makes the city of Firozabad famous Firozabad is famous for Bengal industries. It is the center of India's glass blowing industry. Families have spent generations working around furnaces, welding glass, making bangles for all the men in the land. Okay? So Firozabad is basically famous for Bengal industry. And with this fact, you also add one or two value points as are mentioned in the uh, answer. Next, this is also very important for board exam. Uh, mention the hazards of working in the glass industry. What are the hazards, health hazards of working in the glass industry is also very, very important, dear students. Let's uh, revise it. The glass bangle industry offers very unhealthy environment to the people. They have to work in the glass furnaces with high temperature in dingy cells. Their eyes are most adjusted to the dark than to the light outside. This makes them blind before they become adults. That is why it is very dangerous to work in uh, glass industries. Okay. Next you see, dear students, how is Mukesh's attitude to his situation different from that of his family? Okay, because as I told you, Mukesh wants to be motor mechanic. He is a, um, he's a different boy. Uh, he has a lot of ambition in life. Uh, therefore, he is quite different from his family. So let's explain it in terms of instances from the text. So Mukesh's family looks at the family profession of Bengal making at, as karam or destiny. Okay. Because Mukesh's family thinks that they are destined to uh, work in Bengal factory, they cannot afford to switch their profession. Understood? His grandmother perceives it as God-given. His, his grandmother considers this particular profession of uh, Bengal making as God-given. They are ready to die out of blindness and grim poverty, but won't defy this profession. Okay? They are ready to even die out of blindness and poverty from this profession but they will not switch their profession they are very loyal to their profession of bangle making on the other hand mukesh wants to be a motor mechanic and is therefore considered to be an iconoclast as he dares to deviate from taking to his family tradition of um, you know bangle making 
So dear students, as you have seen how to write an answer, when it comes to writing an answer for the examination, you've got to write, take into consideration the different aspects which can be included in writing an answer. Here you see how is the answer written. First of all, the question you read, how is Mukesh's attitude to his situation different from that of his family? So first of all, you've got to describe about what is uh, his family's attitude towards their profession. And then you make a contrast of that situation with the ambition of Mukesh. So this is how you've got to write the answer. First of all, describe the family tradition and then make a contrast uh, of this situation okay, with Mukesh's ambition of becoming a motor mechanic. So please go through this question. This question, previous question also, 5 and 6 are very important questions for all the examinations. Okay, They are you know, two of the most important questions from this lesson, uh, loss frame. Okay. Now, uh, out of the extra questions you see, this is very important. Why does the author say that the bangle makers are caught in a vicious wave or vicious circle? Why? Uh, bangle makers in Simapuri. Let me explain. Certain forces conspire to keep the workers in bang bangle industry of Firozabad, okay, uh, in poverty. So, what are these forces? They include, these forces are moneylenders, middlemen, policemen, law keepers, the bureaucrats and politicians, okay. These are the people who interferes in the, who interfere in the life of uh, the people in Firozabad. They dictate their will to get their work done cheaply and impose a heavy burden on children. Understood? Therefore, uh, Bengal makers are caught in a vicious wave. Okay? You can uh, also add one or two value points if you like. Okay? Like how are they, uh, with the help of an instance you can also describe how are they involved in, uh, in the, uh, in the, um, uh, how are they, entangled or how are they uh, uh, how are they involved badly by these people by these uh, forces okay like saukar middlemen all that okay so you can give one or two instances they are mentioned in the textbook okay so to make your answer complete uh, i think somehow somewhere this answer can be made better by giving one at least one example uh, of how the, these children have become victim of the involvement of those middle forces, okay? Uh, okay, next you see, why could the Bengal makers not organize themselves into a cooperative? This is, this is the example, dear students, as I told you, no? this is one of the examples which you can mention here also somehow, okay? Uh, because uh, this, is, this question is also important. Why could the Bengal makers not organize themselves into a cooperative? The Bengal makers are trapped in the vicious circle of shaukers, middlemen, policemen, bureaucrats and politicians. If they tried to organize themselves, they would be beaten by the police and put, sorry, the spelling is wrong here, it should be put, P-U-T, which is a uh, typing mistake, dear students, uh, and put in jail, okay, or put behind the bars also you can write. You can also write put behind the bars, okay. So, uh, Bengal makers are not able to organize themselves into a cooperative means Bengal uh, makers are not able to make a make a union okay make a union of their own why because if they are found to be doing so if they are found to be organizing a union okay to uh, to, to to protest against uh, those middlemen then what will happen then uh, then what will happen? They would be beaten by the police badly and put behind the bars okay, or put in jail. So these are the reasons as to why the, uh, the, the bangle makers are not in a position to organize themselves into a, uh, into a cooperative. Okay? Because if they want to make a union of their own, cooperative of their own, then they are immediately traced or found out. Uh, caught and beaten by the police and put behind the jail. Now this is also very important question, garbage to them is gold. Why does the author say so about the rack pickers? As I already explained you, uh, garbage is gold to the rack pickers of Simhapuri because it provides them with food and is a means of survival for them. Moreover, it is gold also because the rack pickers can find stray coins and currency notes in it. Okay, so. 
garbage is garbage for them is gold why garbage for them is gold because sometimes garbage contains uh, stray coins or co uh, currency notes in it therefore garbage is uh, and the children uh, look for frantically okay? look for frantically or look for desperately into the garbage uh, about finding the stray coins or currency notes because they sometimes do find of course that, that is why they become eager whenever they go for uh, uh, you know their frantic search in in the garbage uh, they desperately look for finding stray coins uh, or um, currency notes and uh, that is why garbage has been compared to gold because uh, garbage contains sometimes stray coins or um, currency notes that is why garbage has been compared to gold here okay next can mukesh realize his dream of becoming a motor mechanic okay let's find out man is a product of his environment around him it is difficult uh, it is difficult to realize his dream as he is torn between his desires and his family which firmly believes that the art of bengal making is a god given lean, uh, lineage that cannot be escaped however he is ambitious and is willing to walk a long way to the garage to give wings to his dreams okay so dear students uh, uh, in the story it is not given whether he is uh, you know able to uh, fulfill his ambition but very likely dear students he is able to fulfill his uh, ambition because uh, he has already set the goal for himself mm, for this reason uh, in all probability he shall find out ways to come out of his uh, family tradition of bengal making and plunge into his new uh, you know adventure or plan uh, plunge into his new project of being a motor mechanic in all probability he shall be able to fulfill his ambition okay uh, so dear students ncert uh, questions are very important because they are all important uh, because they have the textbook has given all the important questions okay uh, therefore i think uh, ncert text questions uh, as well as some extra questions that I have given you here, uh, you can prepare and they will be sufficient for your board examination. Uh, but directly I may not give you the questions, but answers will be almost identical, okay? Uh, you've got to understand the concept, uh, like as I told you, uh, why is garbage uh, compared to coins in the story, okay? You've got to uh, write a reasoned answer, okay? And then, mm, you know, uh, mm, like for example, there are some questions like, you know, vicious wave okay so what do vicious circle um, refer to in the story and why are they called vicious circle okay so likewise some uh, questions might be there so you've got to understand the concept what is vicious circle okay um, do you know the meaning of vicious circle dear students we have vicious circle means uh, if you are entangled in a like in a spider's net okay um, or spider's web, okay, you are not able to come out of this, it keeps coming to you, it has got a boomerang effect on you. So that is what is called vicious, vicious circle, okay. Vicious circle means uh, everything will come around you, okay. Uh, you know, you cannot escape that particular situation. Uh, that is why, uh, like a spider's web, you shall be, uh, like a spider gets uh, entangled in, the, in its web, uh, likewise, you cannot uh, come out of a particular situation you are in. So, in order to uh, explain that, vicious circle is used actually, okay. Vicious circle is a phase or a situation from where people cannot come out, okay. It keeps coming to him or her uh, very often. Uh, they cannot come out of this particular uh, wave or circle. That is why it is called vicious circle. Okay, then dear students, uh, this is important, hazards of working in uh, glass industry, Mukesh's attitude different from his family. So all the questions, uh, I hope you have written down on your, uh, in your notebook. You prepare this and please do uh, watch my uh, concept video from this lesson, okay? Concept video from this lesson. I haven't gone through the text uh, in the revision class because I've already made con concept video on this lesson. If you have any paragraph or any sentence that you can, cannot understand, so please do uh, write the page name uh, and page number and uh, line number of that particular page. I shall certainly uh, explain you, uh, text you the uh, meaning of this particular sentence, okay? So dear students, one second before I wrap up the lesson today, let me tell you that I go to my website and uh, in the chat box you 
type your questions to me okay if you do not understand you go to the text first of this lesson if you do not understand any uh, sentence or any paragraph what you need to do is just write down the page number and mention the number of uh, line number okay which you are not able to understand or paragraph number and send it to me i shall uh, you know respond to you uh, within a day okay if i am free on the same day otherwise might be the next day but this is the best platform for you if you have any query if you have any doubt go to the chat box of my website and then uh, write your query and i shall reply you back when sh whenever i shall reply you back uh, your the, my answer will go to your uh, mailbox as well as on the chat box so you can check in either way okay either from the mail or from the chat box thank you so much dear students so next day i shall discuss some other lesson most probably the third level i'm going to discuss with you because it's a bit difficult for you to understand i hope uh, so um, till then bye bye take care and if you have any query please do let me know through the chat box thank you so much Uh, Arnish, uh, can you think of ways to improve lives of people of Firozabad? Uh, it's something uh, HOTS or value-based questions. Uh, yeah, it can come uh, under the HOTS or value-based questions. It can come. Uh, it is also a good question. Uh, you know, anything of this sort can also come. Uh, but answer is not given directly in the textbook. That is why it is uh, concept-based questions. And, and it, it, it comes under HOTS or value-based question. It's a good question. Thank you, Arnish. Bye-bye. Take care.